What's up guys, DRock1992 here. This is this video is going to be part two of my July movies review. Uh, where I left off was July 22nd, the weekend of July 22nd. I talked about the first, there were three wide releases that came out that week. I talked about the first wide release, Ice Age, Ice Age Collision Course. Now I'll be talking about the second wide release, which was Lights Out, which uh, was a horror thriller film. Um, I talk about it because it was pretty popular. Um, you know, this movie's kind of like what goes on when the lights are turned off. Um, on a budget of $4.9 million, it grossed eighty-seven point six million dollars. That is pretty, pretty darn impressive. So, a short, a very small budget, and it made a lot of money. Um, Teresa Palmer stars in this film. Maria Bello also stars in the film as well. Uh, so, money-wise, this movie did well. Critically, it had a seventy-six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. And critics, or audiences, gave the film a B uh, overall, so very good critical response. Audiences really liked it, and it made a ton of money on the budget it had. So very impressive. And then the last wide release that came out uh, the weekend of July 22nd was Star Trek Beyond. And... Star Trek Beyond is the third movie in the rebooted Star Trek series. It is the 13th film overall in the Star Trek film franchise. Now, a um, little bit of background into Star Trek. I saw the first movie. Um, I saw the first Star Trek film. Didn't see the second one yet. And I thought the first film was okay. I didn't think it was anything really special. Um... This was kind of my first exposure to Star Trek, and I didn't really know about the mythology, uh, about the universe uh, behind it. So Star Trek Beyond is the third film in this franchise, and on a $185 million budget, it's made $197 million. So far, it's going to make more money going into theaters and all that. It's it's definitely still going to make its money. Um, this movie is also marred by a bit of tragedy because one of the stars of the movie, Anton Yelchin, who played a character in the films, he passed away in a car crash. Leonard Nimoy died during pre-production of the film. Leonard Nimoy obviously played Spock in the uh, early Star Wars, uh, or Star Trek, early Star Trek films, and the TV series as well. Leonard Nimoy is like a legend among Star Trek fans. So, the movie itself got a lot of positive response. 83% on Rotten Tomatoes, and CinemaScore gave the film an A-. minus. So, very good stuff for for the film, for sure. Um, so, yeah, this movie continues the Star Trek lore, uh, continues the, the Star Trek lore and all that, got positive reviews, it's going to make a lot of money, so very impressive for that franchise. So anyway, the next movie I'm going to talk about came out August 25th or July 25th, and that was Batman the Killing Joke. So, I got a chance to see this movie, Batman the Killing Joke. It only came out, I didn't see it in theaters, because largely because this movie only came out for one day in theaters, and that was it. Then it got released through VOD and, and all the other properties as well. Uh, but Batman the Killing Joke is about Batman and the Joker. Um, the Joker, you know, the Joker decides to take revenge on Commissioner Gordon and Batgirl, or Barbara Gordon, the daughter of Commissioner Gordon, who's also Batgirl, and he does it in a very, uh, in only the Joker's way of taking revenge. 
So Batman has to save those two. Batman the Killing Joke, I did see it. I'm going to give a review later on about the film. Uh, but I will say I enjoyed the film. I thought it was a pretty good animated uh, adventure. Um, the two main people in this movie, Kevin Conroy, who voices Batman in uh, the Batman animated series that came out in the 90s. Uh, he's also voiced the Batman, I think, in other s stuff, too. And then Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker himself, voices the Joker, and he would con he voiced the Joker in Batman the Animated Series and other properties of Batman as well. So these two power the film, and these two give great performances. I will say that, definitely. Uh, on a budget of three and a half million dollars, it made four point three million. Overall, I mean it it only the one day anyway. It only was on for one day in theaters. And that's what it grossed. So, and critically, it got a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, right down the middle, uh, in critic ratings and all that. So, yeah, uh, I won't talk more. I'm not going to talk any more about the film. I will talk more in depth about it in my review of Batman: The Killing Joke, which will be coming later. The next movie I'm going to talk about is came out July 27th, and it was a thriller called Nerve. Uh, Nerve stars Emma Roberts and Dave Franco, uh, and it's a... I've heard a lot of comparisons of this movie to Pokemon Go, and this is, it revolves around an online objective truth or dare video game, which allows people to enlist as players or watchers as the game intensifies. Overall, this movie made $30.6 million on a budget of $20 million. So, not that great of a box office pull. Critically, it had a 59% 59, 59 on Rotten Tomatoes, and CinemaScore gave the film an A-. So audiences really liked it, the audience members that did see the movie liked it, and critically, it's down the middle. Not great, but not horrible either. You know, I don't know if I'll see this movie. Um, I mean, it looks interesting enough from the trailers that I've seen of it, but we'll see. And then the last weekend in July was July 29th. Uh, there were two wide releases that came out. The first wide release that I'm going to talk about was Bad Moms. Bad Moms. My mom actually I saw this movie. And she said she really enjoyed it. Um, I have not seen it yet. I want to see it for sure. Um, this movie has Mila Kunis probably best known as Meg on Family Guy and uh, on that 70s show as well and the Ted movie, the first Ted movie and forgetting Sarah Marshall also so Mila Kunis is in this movie Kristen Bell is also in this movie this is a reuniting of Mila Kunis and Kristen Bell they were both in forgetting Sarah Marshall um, I recommend that movie by the way forgetting Sarah Marshall is a very good romantic comedy type film so Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, Katherine Hahn, and Christina Applegate, and Jada Pinkett Smith are also in this film. So, an all-star cast of women. So basically, Mila Kunis is this mother who's stressed out with her life. She's a perfect mom, basically. She decides to, to let her guard down, let it all out, and party, basically. Party like a mother. So, but overall, on a $20 million budget, it's made $61.1 million, so that's a pretty good total for this film. Critically, it has a 63% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is very good for a comedy, by the way. Uh, positive reviews, mixed to positive reviews, and then CinemaScore gave this movie an A. So, very good numbers there for Bad Moms. So, it was a fine movie.
and one that I, I can't wait to see. And then the final film that I'm going to talk about that came out in July, on the weekend of July 29th, is Jason Bourne. He's back. Jason Bourne is back. I have fond memories of this movie franchise. The Bourne Supremacy, which is the second film in the franchise, was the first PG-13 movie I ever saw in theaters. First one. And was directed by the same guy, Paul Greengrass. Uh, comes back, he directed Bourne Supremacy and Bourne Ultimatum. Uh, Bourne Legacy is the first... Born, Born Identity is the first movie. Second movie is uh, Supremacy. Third movie is Ultimatum. And the fourth movie, which did not have Matt Damon, was The Bourne Identity, starring Jeremy Renner. Matt Damon was Jason Bourne in the first three films. So Jason Bourne, Matt Damon is back. And some new characters coming in. Tommy Lee Jones and Alicia Vikander. Alicia Vikander. Uh, Alicia Vikander, an Academy Award winning actress, I believe. Yeah, I think she won last year. Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones is just one of the best actors, I think, in my opinion, out there. I really enjoy his work. But, um, but yeah, Jason Bourne, on a $120 million budget, has made $199.5 million. Still going in theaters. I believe last weekend was its second weekend in release. So it's still going to make its money going into August here and all that. So, but the movie got very mixed reviews. It made, it had a 57% on Rotten Tomatoes, but audiences really enjoyed it, an A- minus overall for CinemaScore. So, audiences really enjoyed it, it's going to make its money, but very mixed reviews, and I believe the first few Bourne movies got pretty positive reviews. So, a little unusual for uh, this film, but, but yeah, I, um, you know, I'm probably going to really enjoy it. It's one of my highly anticipated movies. I really want to see the film. So, hopefully I do in the near future. Well, anyway, that is it for all of the July releases that came out. Uh, August is coming up. Well, we're in August already. And... There are a few movies that look very interesting. Actually, one in particular I've already watched. I'm going to give my review on it later. But, you know, August looks pretty, uh, looks somewhat interesting. So, we'll see how August turns out. But that is it for my review on the July films of release. D-Rock 1992, out.